Good morning, and welcome to Christian Fellowship. My name is Mike, and uh, today is February 13th, 2020. And uh, I'm going to read some inspiration here in a little bit. <clears throat> I read one every morning, and then I send it out to an email list. So if you'd like to be on the email list, send me an email. My email address is uh, on the site. And then I'll put you on the list and you'll get these readings every day. I also post them up here on Wix. Um, I don't publish it to the web, so you have to go to Wix. I, I put the URL in there too. Um, <clears throat> okay, here's today's. February 13th. And the Lord said, peace be with you. Ever since the resurrection, this has been my watch, my watchword to those who yearn for me. Let my peace settle over you and enfold you in my loving presence. To provide this radiant peace for you, I died a criminal's death. Receive my peace abundantly and thankfully. It is a rare treasure, dazzling in delicate beauty yet strong enough to withstand all. Well, that's why it's so important to have men in our lives. We can withstand everything that comes at us. Yeah, we'll still, we'll still experience what comes at us, but he's right there with us. So it cannot overcome us, okay? If it starts to get us down, he brings us back up. If it tries to harm us, it's his will, not that circumstance that's going to win. So you really have nothing to worry about. And yet we still worry. It's kind of crazy. It's <clears throat> yet it's strong enough to withstand all onslaughts. Wear my peace with regal dignity. It will keep your heart and mind close to mine. And Bible support for this, John 20, verses 19 and 21, John 14, verse 27, and Philippians 4, verse 7. So you go to your Bible, you read those verses, you sit quietly with the Lord and see what the Spirit puts on your mind, how those verses can affect you. Because each one of us is different. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ, but each of us has a separate, you know, separate personalities, separate jobs, separate everything. Yet, we're still one together. That's what people don't spend enough time thinking about. It's like each of us has a different job. He gives us those jobs. He puts the circumstances in our life for what he needs us to do. And it may be nothing doesn't matter. As long as it's coming from him, it's the right place to come. So, I love these little uh, inspirations. Of course, <clears throat> I didn't get to call my brother last night, so we'll have to do it tonight. But we're reading the Bible and going back to Genesis. Because Genesis was the first book. Um, <clears throat> and um, they say it was written by Moses, but uh, and through the Holy Spirit. That's I mean that's that's a possibility. Could have been dictated to him by the Holy Spirit, and he just wrote down the words. He wasn't alive when Genesis was was when what was written. Moses didn't come till much later. Um, so. It's um, so for him to have written the book of Genesis, I don't know. That's what the, that's what they say, and uh, but I don't think there's any concrete proof that that was uh, that's the way it is. Of course, man is flawed, so if man says this happened, it may have happened, it may not have. 
you know. But that's a tough part about uh, listening to some of this is you have to remember that man <coughs> wrote this. Now, what Moses <coughs> wrote was dictated by God, okay? So, and he heard God, and he went up in the mountain and got us the Ten Commandments and were not. So those things happened. And then there were certain people, like Paul. Paul met Jesus. And Jesus talked to him. He knew who it was. Okay? So then he went off on his journey with Jesus. So, and that's what I and many others Comparatively to the world's population, it's very few, but that's what we have to do. Okay, wherever I go, I carry him, glorify his name, and a verse of the Bible is on the back of the shirt. So, if somebody reads the back of the shirt, they've actually read the Bible. They may not even believe in the Bible. They may be a totally different, you know, a totally different religious beliefs. Their God is not Jesus. Okay, we'll all find out in the end who's real and who isn't. And each of us believes, so they think their God's the right one. We believe Jesus is the right one. The book tells us, and the book covers all of, all of life. Right from the beginning, how it was created. And then you have the people that believe that the Big Bang Theory that was all just creative blah. It's just like, <coughs> I guess I could reference this to, uh, <coughs> again, a little coffee here. Um, I guess you could reference it to, it's like, I had an experience as I testified to in the trailer back in 2001 where I met the Spirit of the Lord. So I knew, because I had that experience, that Jesus was real, that he's actually, his spirit is still passing between realms. And although, you know, and then I heard the voice, the voice in everything is love. From his, when he's talking to you, love itself. Now people can write love on their pants, on their shirts, they can talk about it, they can sing about it. There's only one love in the world. That's it. And it's Jesus. Period. There is no other love. So if you're searching for love, the old song, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. If you're looking in the world, you're looking in the wrong place. Okay. He can come into this world and you can experience that. But this, this world is a fallen world. Became that way in the Garden of Eden, and it's still that way today. And it won't change until time ends. The judgment comes, and the new earth is coming out, brought down by God, the Father, Yahweh. That's it. So it's pretty simple, actually. Simplicity, as the Lord says, is a keynote to heaven. Whole thing is simplicity. Simplify your lives. Our lives are way too complex cluttered up with a whole bunch of stuff that is absolutely meaningless. It's all going to burn up and go away. And disappear. And the only thing that's going to be left is Jesus. So if you're part of Jesus, you're in good shape. If you're not, well, we all have the opportunity. So, all right. Um, I'm going to let you go. This one's kind of short. It's only nine minutes, but that's okay. Doesn't matter if they're short or they're long. Sometimes I have the Lord prompts me with more to say and relate to on these readings. Sometimes he doesn't. <coughs> Be aware of what's happening in the world, too, because Christians, Christianity, Christianity is <coughs> is definitely under attack. And uh, 
And this has only looked like the beginning of everything. So, try to, you know, it's, and it's tough because you can't get the truth from mainstream media anymore. We always used to think it was the truth, but it really wasn't. It was all contrived. That's a tough thing to, you know, you, actually makes you quite angry, really. But, we have to go back and say this whole thing was created by Yahweh, God the Father. And uh, so it's his creation. And it's his will be done. Jesus gave that in the Our Father, the prayer that he gave his apostles when they asked him how to pray. All right. You have peace, love, and joy to you from me. And peace, love, and joy to you from Jesus, who sits right next to you, there all the time. Last night, he planned your whole day out. Look around today and see the things that come into your life. And think of them. Wow, that came from Jesus. What? Is there a message in it? Is it, you know, something I should pay attention to? You never know. There are no coincidences. Ever. Everything has been planned out. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Or maybe I'll get another one done today. <laughs> I keep saying that. And I, sometimes I do, sometimes I Most of the time I don't. Okay, again, too busy. <laughs>